one of my favorite times of the year. We get to chat with Sergeant Bob Conklin from the Anaheim Police Department speaking about cops for kids. And they've got an event coming up. We'll talk about that in a bit. But tell us a little bit about the, uh, the Cops for Kids program because it is such a great program. It is a good program. Cops for Kids was established, uh, gosh, I want to say 1960. So our youth programs have been around uh, for decades. And Longer than me. Well, yeah. <laughs> 1960. Okay. Well, based on some of those uh, sound captions, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the, the goal is to basically give kids an, an alternative to, to gangs, drugs, uh, violence, and delinquent behaviors. So um, two of our programs right now, we have the Junior Explorers and Explorers. Uh, basically, if you're in the seventh grade um, and up, um, then, then you can join our program. Is it going to be only at-risk youth, or is it going to be um, aspirational youth as well? All of it. All of it. So we, we do we do set a, a bar. So, um, you know, kids that are, you know, already have a, a delinquent past or already uh, somehow involved with gangs and things like that, that that's not where we are. Uh, we set the bar um, relatively low. Again, we're looking for like a, a C average, you know, kids that have a decent attitude and attendance in school. Um, and then our goal is just to, is just help improve them and, and get them on the, on the career path that they want. So do, 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 is this a, a feeder program to the police departments or law enforcement? The police department does, does use it, uh, as a, as a, as a recruiting tool, uh, in the long run. So, I mean, we're talking about kids that are in seventh, eighth grade, my, you know, and anybody's teenage kids don't even know what they're going to do, you know tomorrow or little than what they had for breakfast so but you know something when i was a kid yeah and obviously it was a long time ago in a different day and age you know it was uh firemen and policemen are the two big things that that kids wanted to do or be when they grew up yeah and and they you know a lot of them still have those those kind of uh aspirations but like i said um you know they they're, it's going to change. I wanted to be a trash truck driver. Well, no, no, <laughs> hey, some of these guys make a lot of good money. Yeah. So, you know, There's nothing wrong you, with you trash truck drivers. No. That's what I, that's what I wanted to do. My grandmother went nuts. Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not bad at all. So, um, but like I said, you know, these kids, they don't know what they're, what they want to do at this age. So our, our job is to, is just to kind of open up the envelope a little bit, open up the umbrella, let them see all the opportunities that they have, um, you know, after high school and into college and uh, and help get them ready to be competitive uh, for those for those hiring processes. What do the explorers do? What do they actually do? Uh, I know I see them out, you know, doing traffic control sometimes. But what is what is what is their main thing that they're doing in, as a regular basis? Again, the, these kids at a very young age, we teach them how to give back to their community. So most of their time is spent at community events. Um, both within the city of Anaheim and throughout Orange County. Sometimes we even venture out into LA County to help them out with things. But that's that's primarily how how they give back is through volunteerism. So we 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 assign them a bunch of community events throughout the year. Um, I think last time I tallied, we we were attending 80 events a year. So hundreds and hundreds of community service hours. And again, it's just teaching the kids that, that you know there, there's more to to just academics and athletics and that giving back to your community and influencing your peers in a positive way to make good decisions is um, the, that's the premise that, that we use the programs for. We need some of that for adults. Everyone. <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, because, you know, you look at it so many times that, that people have gotten away from the idea of serving the community, community service. And it's a shame that, that we've gotten away from that, but maybe if organizations like this can start setting a foundation to get us back to where we should be. And it's, it's so important for, for our chief, uh, Rick Armanderas and, and our mayor, um, Ashley Aiken and, and, and our city manager, Jim Vanderpool. It's so important for them that even during COVID when programs across the city were being shut down, um, you know, we were allowed in, in a minimal capacity to do what we had to do, whether it be zoom or whatever else to keep the program running. And so, the, the the fundraiser and I'm confidential allows us because I mean it's it's a it's a nonprofit it's it's a it's a voluntary program so our uh, our budget through the city and the police department is is small so we rely heavily on the fundraising to help to help fund everything that they do which that's in a whole nother 
topic when you look at, at the way budget issues are going right now and so many places are having budget shortfalls. The uh, concept of, of trying to get any money from cities to help with organizations and things like this, even though they're needed, it's kind of hard. So the, the fundraising is really important. Well, and you, and you look at everything that's happening, you know, across the country as far as, you know, any occupation you look at, there are struggles uh, financially. So, you know, corporations and even uh, government entities are, 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 are struggling at times with, with, with their budgets. And um, the one thing that we want to do is provide a constant variable for these kids so that even during down times uh, when, when the budget is bad, we have those funds uh, available to keep the, to keep this program going and continue our weekly meetings and let these kids know that they're that they're part of a, a long term family. So when they when when the when these young folks go out and do these events, uh, you said like eighty a year. Do the organizations that they're supporting do they help support the Cops for Kids program? Or are they, or is it a completely different? You know, the, the the program is out there just doing a community service, and and they're going to show up whether the the or the uh, X Y Z company supports the program as well. We we probably get hundreds of requests every year. Um, so there, I mean, our only criteria is that there's some nexus to Anaheim, that there's some connection to to our community's youth. Outside of that, we don't have any expectations of, of any donations or any kind of compensation. Um, that's not what we want to teach the kids. Um, you know, donations are appreciated. However, we want the kids to know that that you put yourself out there and you you give back to your community, um, you know, w without an expectation of return. So in the past, well, we'll have to talk about this when we come back. But in the past, I think we've chatted a little bit about what the success levels are of the graduates. And maybe we can talk about that when we come back. Continuing our conversation, Sergeant Bob Conklin, Anaheim Police Department is with us. We're chatting about Cops for Kids and a big event they've got coming up. We'll talk about that as well. But if you were listening to us in the last segment, I made a comment because I've, uh, you've been on, uh, how many years in a row have you been on doing this with me? I don't know, four or uh, five three, years? Three, four, four years? Four years, so. And one of the things I always love us getting into is because I think, I, you know, we need a good place, a good positive role model. Some some kids don't get the, the great role model that we wish they would have at home. And this can kind of be a surrogate. It, does, it doesn't replace a great home, I don't think. But it can kind of be a surrogate to put kids on a great path. And talk a little bit about where some of the kids end up going when they graduate the program. Yeah, you know, this the cops for kids is is supplementary to to what the parents provide at home. Um the, the parents have to be an innovative part of it. You know, a 14-year-old kid can't drive, so someone's got to get them to the meetings and the community events. So the parents do have to have a small part of it. So we do that in partnership with them. Uh, you know, these kids don't know what they want to do um, you know, from day to day, and and you never know where they're gonna end up. But um usually uh, you know, they they graduate high school and they move on to college, junior college or, or a local um, UC or Cal State. Um, a handful of them have, have chosen a military path. Um, we, we bring in military recruiters from all the branches to give presentations to the kids, including the National Guard. And I'll tell you, the National Guard, even in high school, if I knew about it back then, I would have joined. It's phenomenal, phenomenal opportunities. Um, and then we also, for those that want to choose the law enforcement path, once they turn 21, they're in college. Um, they can join our uh, police cadet program, a part-time job, and just learn more about the different facets of law enforcement. It's great how it's it kind of a, a stepping stone for those that really want to to take you take, make use of the the program like that. So it's it's a it's a great idea, and I love the idea that it, it's the I like the partnership concept. Yeah, and we like I said we we don't know everything. You know, our our scope is is law enforcement. But we want to uh, deliver the message to the kids that that's that's not the only thing out there. So we bring in a lot of private industry, a lot of other nonprofits to help teach them, um, you know, the, the wide variety of opportunities that are available to them outside of high school. Ironic enough, you're filling a void by design or by by uh, or otherwise that unfortunately we've kind of lost in the schools. I've asked I asked my kids as they were going through school. You know, did they have the military recruiters come in and do the vocational aptitude tests? 
and they don't do that anymore. I, I don't know about you, but when I was in high school last century, right? I think it was uh, I think it was the army came in, and they did a military. They did a not a vocational aptitude test. It wasn't a military, but said, "Hey, this is what you're based on this test. This is what you'd be good at." And you know, with you exposing them to these things, it might help. Yeah, I mean that, and and even even you know some some basic trade school education, you know, and you know we're we we we're pushing kids into college without without you know letting them realize you know the variety of opportunities, well established careers in in a lot of these trade schools. Um, Preach into the choir. No, no, I'm every, a big day. fan of that because um, I've got three sons. Two of them are not college material. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them, a trade school is perfect. He's kind of doing an apprentice right now. Fantastic. The other one's a janitor over at Disneyland, ex, you know, just excelling. Mm -hmm. And one was a, one went to college, mm -hmm. right? So it's not it's not for everybody. You know, we've gotten in our head that everyone has to go to college, and I don't believe that's the right path for everyone. Yeah, and like I said, most of these kids, their 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 bubble has always been Anaheim or whatever respective city they live in, and it's just it's just expanding that bubble, letting them know that there are no. There are no bounds. There are no limits to what they can do. So we meet with them every week. We maintain that that relationship over the course of, gosh, it could be seven or eight years. Uh, you know, a lot of these kids go through enough struggles where you know their their family structure doesn't even last that long. So we try to we try to provide that 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 constant variable for them um, and and help them get to a, a successful path. So one of the things I've watched with the, some of the nonprofits, one of them I, I really enjoy is, is an organization called Solutions for Change down in Vista. And they end up getting their graduates come back and help with the program. Does, do you see that happen at all? Yeah, our, uh, our kids, in fact, one example, um, he, just, he just went off to Army boot camp um, right out of high school, and he's going to come right back and and maintain his position in the Explorer program and, and provide some, some, some leadership and, and example opportunities for the, for the kids. But yeah, that is often, you know, that's, then that's a great, a great path because, you know, you're, you're probably closer in age to them than I, I would be. Right. So my kids, they don't, uh, they'll listen to somebody else a lot quicker than they will to me or their peers, right? Well, somebody yeah, that just yeah. graduated, they're going to listen to them more than they're going to listen to you. Listen to me. And that, and that's one of the things is we is we understand that you know the, these kids don't understand the power of of and and the influence that they have on their peer group. We only have about 50 60 kids in our program right now, but if we can convince, you know, each one of those kids to have a you know to to convince their social group to make good decisions, not not engage in in criminal and and gang behaviors and and to do the right thing, then we have exponentially just increased our impact on the community as a whole. Hey, think about that, that uh, one who tells one or one who tells 10 who tells 10. Yeah. Right. I mean, that whole concept, you get 50 or 60 kids, if they can influence 10 people. Mm -hmm. And my guess is, is if you've got good kids there, which I'm sure the program is, is generating good kids, they're going to impact more than just 10. Yeah. And we've partnered with our school resource officers. So now, um, we, we've just started um, directly recruiting, whereas before it's been through, you know, it's just simply word of mouth and siblings. But now our school resource officers are are directly recruiting from the high schools and junior highs. They're looking for those kids that want that just that little extra level of, of responsibility that's going to make them much more competitive down the road. Well, and the other part of it is, is if you're a, a lousy athlete like me, right, it gives you another avenue of, of a place that you can excel in and you know, be yourself and, and, and grow, right? I mean, sports are great, a great thing, but you know, if you don't, if you have two left feet. Yeah. And sports are phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, you know, club memberships are phenomenal. The miracle is watching a 12 year old step into a same environment as a 19 year old. And it doesn't matter the background, the neighborhood they grew up in, what high school or junior high they go to, you put them in that paramilitaristic environment and you have an immediate bond. So it's 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 an amazing chemistry to watch, and even the kids that are involved with athletics full time, right? You know, you got your your varsity baseball players and stuff like that. We accommodate uh, your season schedule with with the with the Explorer program. When we come back, I want to talk about our, the event that's coming up, and also, is there an advantage if you've been an Explorer to getting into the Cadet program? To chatting with Sergeant Bob Conklin, Anaheim Police Department, we're chatting about cops for kids. And a great event 
And it's one of my one of my favorite. I go to a lot of events every year. This is one of my favorites. My wife and I just have a great, great time at this event coming up October 13th. It's at the River Arena once again. Is there going to be any room for people there? Because every time I go there, it's it's packed with people who want to support this program. It is, and every every year, like I said, we're we're, we're blessed and and we're grateful to the community and um, you know spreading spreading this effort, um, you know just just you know a, across the county. Um, I try every year to get you to spill the beans on what the story is going to be, and I never succeed. It's it's difficult. There <laughs> there are probably six people that that know what the uh, what the presentation is going to be about. But explain the the over. The uh the high level as far as what is what do I what would I expect when I go there at four and then what the presentation at seven? Yeah, four to seven p.m. We have a, a you know a, a dozen or so um, food and drink vendors from across Orange County. Um, a lot of them uh, right here, you know, mom and pop shops that are based here in Anaheim. Uh, they come in and they provide uh, you know food and beverages from from four to seven. Um, there will be uh, I think we have maybe four or five breweries showing up um some some donated uh, quality wines and then um from seven to nine is the presentation our homicide detail gets up on stage and gives you a live presentation as far as um you know the details of a homicide investigation uh, from beginning to end so the, the the investigations that i've seen uh every one of them so far have been things that i knew of, i knew from watching the news what had happened as far as you know, a homeless guy that's killing people and they catch him at Carl's Jr. or whatever, right? So it's stuff that we all know about, but explain, you know, like a couple, like last year's. What, what was last year? Do you remember last year's? Put him on the spot right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So what was last year's? What was last year's? Um, last year uh, involved um, two two really bad guys that, that were going around um, killing women. And um, was that the one where they... They were uh, they were killing the 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 the, the ladies on the boulevard, yes. and then they found them in the Republic. Uh, they found trash bags, and they had bodies at Republic trash. And yeah, that and that and like I said, that one was tough because you know at the last minute, the uh, the family members of of the victims um, reached out to us and, and asked us to be part of it. And um, I get chills so, when I hear that. I know time. that 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 was that was that was heartbreaking, and yet um, just it it was it was exhilarating in that. And that they they wanted to uh, to still uh, you know have that connection with the Anaheim Police Department because we did such a good job with their investigation, and as well support our uh, our, our kid programs. You know, and the the investigation sometimes, and, and there's so many times that we don't say thank you enough to the police department. And I'm a big proponent of 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 doing everything we can for the, the men and women of the police departments, fire departments, all the law enforcement. Um, because you guys all do such a great job out in the community and, and we should all be more appreciative because you guys are going where we're running from. Well, yeah, but at, at the same time, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a collaborative partnership with the community. We have to, we have to have that, that trust and, and um, you know, quality relationship with the community in order for us uh, to be successful. And this is one of those examples where, you know, without the community support with, without supporting this, this fundraiser, um, our, our youth programs go by the wayside and then you've got a handful of kids. And again, you know, potentially a bunch of generations that, um, you know, that, that could otherwise have done better had they been part of a program like this. Where do you go to get tickets for this event? Eventbrite.com. Eventbrite.com. Okay. So we're, uh, we'll set up a, a, a link on our website to go right to it as well. So, um, there's, there's always a lot of things. What does it cost? It's $45, $45 all inclusive. If you want to throw some money in a tip jar while you're there, you can, but you also have the opportunity to participate in a silent auction. You know, it's, it's Anaheim. It's the resort area. We always have a lot of good quality, um, you know, top quality, uh, silent auction donations from, you know, hotels, resorts. Um, it's gosh. great. I've, 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 I bought, uh, I think I've bought ducks tickets there and angel tickets there. Yeah, our, our Anaheim City Council, our, our city government is donating a, a ton of of uh, ducks tickets. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where they sit. They sit in a, a box. They're usually in a they, the ones I had bought. They were in a suite. Yeah, usually it's something like that. Yeah, but, and they, they were great. And, and you know, it's, oh, yeah. we're thankful for the uh, the city's support of the event. Yeah, and the every, community's support. Yeah, every every year the community um, for you know forks over some some quality 
uh, merchandise and and city government supports 100 but silent auction silent auction opportunities but again if you know uh, a, a live uh, a live dj will be out there so again it's it's just to have a good time it's it's there to spotlight the explorers you'll see all of them up on stage and to spotlight the uh, the quality work of our of our homicide detectives yeah and it's it's a great event i mean if you've ever if you've never seen it, what is it uh, it's kind of like a I refer to it maybe, and I don't know, maybe it's the right or wrong answer, but it's what I do anyway. Um, it's kind of like a live 48 hours. Yeah. It's done in two hours, though. Yeah, right, exactly. And you're going to learn some intimate details about the investigation that you haven't heard from any other media source. Well, if I, one year, not, it might have been last year, it might have been before that, one year they had to hold back a few details because it was so so new that some of the trials hadn't all concluded. So it's yeah. uh, it's great information, and you know we 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 ensure that we get permission from the victims' families, and we uh, you know we try to make sure that that we're not going to you know hinder any any future um, you know court processes. But uh, but yeah, sometimes we have to hold those details back because um, you know these you know these these folks that get convicted of of homicide, you know their their cases can go on for decades. And if you're if you're if you're into watching any of the the police shows on TV. Or 48 hours, or some of these things. It's fascinating when you listen to the homicide detectives tell it because it's it's the actual. It's not a. It's not actors. This is the actual detectives that were on the case. Right, the actual detectives, and I mean, there's there's a script, um, right, and that's just to help keep the efficiency and and time management of the show. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you're you're you know these detectives, they're they're real people. They're standing there. They're telling you the true story and how how it impacts. All of our officers, from the initial patrol response all the way until uh, adjudication. Pretty great. It's a pretty great event. I mean, it's like I say, it's one of my favorites every year. Um, not only to, to support the police department, the police officers show respect, um, but it's a great cause and it's a great organization. So go to Eventbrite, and we'll, again, we'll put up a link on our uh, website. But it's uh, October thirteenth. It's at the River Arena on Broadway in Anaheim. Uh, nice venue over there, and 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 it, they use the was the whole parking lot and across the street last time. I think they used the parking lot across the street and the uh, street area that, because there's a lot of a lot of people come to it. Yeah, it's it's fortunately, um, like I said, we're we're blessed. Unfortunately, it's it's grown significantly. So, um, you know that we have a couple parking structures that are with are within really close walking distance. Um, outside of that, Uber works too. Uber works, yeah. <laughs> and, and and if you want to. Leave a little extra money there to support the program. Once you see the event, I think a lot of people may uh, find that you know maybe they want to leave a, an extra few bucks if you can afford it to help out this program. Yeah, it's 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 real it's it's a real easy cause to support. I mean, there's the funds go in two directions: one to the youth programs, and the other one goes to the Orange County Homicide Investigators Association Victim Support Fund. It it doesn't it doesn't get any any purer than that yeah that's i didn't realize it goes to the uh the victim support fund as well yeah we we give uh yeah we give a portion of it to uh to that association and and again they help support um in, in a myriad of ways victims of violent crimes and it's amazing because like like, like as you mentioned when the, the family was there the family of the victims you now they were there basically saying that there was no voice for these victims and other than the the detectives in the police department that was really the only voice that these these people had because they had kind of gotten into the lower end of, of our society. Yeah, and that and that was tough. And for the family to be there, and like I said, anybody that anybody that that attended that um, that and I'm confidential. Um, if you didn't walk out with chills. You don't have any blood in your. In yeah, your it's, <laughs> it's 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 tough to it's tough to talk about. But yeah, it's it it, it definitely impresses on on um, you know on on. On how strong the the connection is between the police department and the Anaheim community. Now, with the presentation, we only got about a minute left. But with the presentation that goes on, is this a place for kids? I would be cautious on bringing your little kids to this thing. Again, the content is is for mature audiences. Um, again, we're talking about a homicide investigation. This is not edited like it is on Forty Eight Hours of Dateline or whatever on TV. Uh, this is this is the real deal. So, and it's fun fun listening to some of the interactions between the homicide detectives, also. You know, one of them was the uh, one that had the uh, squeaky shoes or big shoes or tight shoes or something like that. Or yeah, you're you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna get some real life banter between between the audience and and the presenters. So it's 
uh, like I said, this this is this is as personable and as real as it gets. It's a fun program. Again, October thirteenth, Anaheim Confidential River Arena, forty five dollars on Eventbrite. Spend more, donate more. Go in, and if you don't win at the silent auction, whatever you planned on spending at the silent auction, put that in the jar at the end and and donate that anyway because you may not have been wanting really that signed autograph or you may not need it, but this will really help the program. Again, October 13th, River Arena in Anaheim, Anaheim Confidential. And as